Hello, and welcome to hopefully a quick overview of the uh, character customizer in Wildermyth. Uh, there's a lot you can do with this, so I'm just going to run through it uh, real fast. Um, you can get to this when you create a new game and you create a new party by just clicking on their portrait rather than just clicking randomize until you find something you like. That's another way to do it. It's fair, but uh, if you want to do something with more control for any reason, uh, you just click on their portrait. You can also cycle through them here and uh, just go from there. It'll automatically bring you to the customize tab here and to name and details so you can just enter a name and we're gonna do red riding hood because why not it gets a start something to start with uh you can pick their gender male female or non-binary and that just kind of has an effect on the various pronouns that are used to refer to them in the game uh, we're gonna leave her as female um, body type regardless of what you picked for gender can be masculine or feminine there's four voices i haven't personally picked up on the differences between the uh, a and b of each so i just kind of leave it at whatever it randomizes to and you can choose attracted to men women or anyone um, i'm just gonna leave that be because i don't feel that's important for red riding hood so eh. Uh, you can uncheck um, these various things. Uh, this one, unchecked, specific events can still cause romances to form. It's not a perfect no romance at all option, um, but it removes the possibility of it gradually happening with another compatible hero over time. Same with the rivalries. And then allowing children is more for if you're playing a longer game and, you know, depending on how long your uh, chapters take, it's usually between second or third chapter that uh, the first potential children of an adventurer shows up. If you, for like character reasons, want to disallow that, you got that option. Okay, and head and face, you've got a number of head shapes. Um, and you can pick any one of these for any look you might be after. I'm gonna say that for this one, I don't have like a specific look in mind, so I'm good with, I think that was the one that it uh, was default to. Uh, same with the faces. You've got, I guess there are a little bit more typically feminine faces, typically masculine faces, but regardless of what body type you chose, regardless of what gender you chose, you can pick any one of these. Like you have pretty total creative freedom. So honestly, I kind of like that one. Hairstyle, same kind of thing. And uh, make sure you scroll because there is quite a lot. You can have long hair, short hair, uh, no hair. You can have a bit of a buzz. Um, it's fairly open. Um, it doesn't have literally every hairstyle under the sun, like, uh, I am not gonna be able to make a true Rapunzel in this game, the closest I could get is probably like that or that, um, just because modeling limits I expect, uh, but other than that, your playing field is pretty wide. So let's see, for a Red Riding Hood, I'm thinking something maybe a little more short and choppy. Let's see. Don't mind that one. Let's go ahead and go with that. Facial hair. Again, any body type, any gender, you can slap a beard, a stubble, a little goatee, whatever you want. The blank option is right there. Uh, there is nothing over here. So if you want no facial hair, you just click on that. Colors. Okay, skin color. Again, you've got this wide palette of natural skin tones you can choose from. You can also adjust your very own. And yes, this does mean that if you want your blue tiefling from D&D, you can do it. The game is not limiting you. Uh, if it's on the slider, if you can like reach it with these things, you can do it. Maybe a little less saturated. Yeah, I'm having a heck of a time now. Uh, let's just go ahead and pick something in here. 
There we go. The preloaded skin tones are fairly nice to have. Uh, hair color. I'm a little tempted to go as red as possible, but I am doing so much other red, so we might just kind of do a reddish brown. Um, because primary and secondary color. These are for your attire, your accents on your weapons, your uh, various um, items that you pick up and can apply to your character's look. Because a nice thing about Wildermyth is that as you pick these items up, they don't come in preset colors, so you don't end up with a character that looks like they just rolled out of the clown car with uh, every color under the sun on them. Um, they actually morph to fit your character's color scheme. Um, so, you know, you can pick up a shield and it looks like an ordinary shield, but you slap it on the character with, you know, a red color scheme, it becomes a red shield. Green color scheme, green shield. Things pretty much always end up harmonizing and matching on your individual characters because of that. Oh, also, um, secondary colors tend to, for some reason, show up, like, more distinctly on your main attire, aside from, like, the beginning garb. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, most, like, armors and robes and things have kind of a mix of them. But I have had, like, say, a mystic who gets a nice set of robes, and their secondary color is the majority of the color on those robes. Um, so it can be a little bit of a mix there. Uh, secondary colors are going to show up more on your um, weapons and things, so in fact, I'm going to make that a little more red. Um, primary colors tend to be mostly on attire, though they do show up on a cloak or a cape if you get one for your character. So fix that. Size. This is how they show up on the map. You can have them short. You can have them tall. I don't mind her being a little short. And then narrow is just a scaling in the other direction. So, um, it doesn't really specify- it doesn't really affect build over much. Uh, your class does more of that. Um, but you do have that option of how wide their stance, how much space they fill in those two directions and dimensions. Okay, so that is just the appearance. There are two other things that you can customize. One of them is in stats. You can't actually adjust any of these numbers directly. What you can do is personality, and this locks in once you actually get them into the game. You can only mess with this during the character building process, so if you um, if you forget or if you mess up, then uh, go back to a loaded save or just accept it and move on is all I can say. Um, you don't really have a way to futz with it later. So, uh, Red Riding Hood's personality is... honestly, it's gonna be a mix of things. Um, loner could work, I'm making her a hunter. I'm almost thinking leader, though, as well. So, honestly, uh, the decisive loner that way. Also, uh, the title is based on the first two and their order. So if I put leader on top, it's the aloof leader. Which I think could work. I'm going to put healer up here because that is actually compassion. It's, um, you doing okay, if you want, I can help. Uh, each of these you can click on, and you can kind of uh, read these little bits and pieces. Uh, they have various um, impacts on your gameplay. So a mix can be good. I'm going to put Hothead up just a little bit, because I think she's going to run into some trouble. Uh, Coward is going to be low. Goofball's middling high. I'm not seeing her as a romantic particularly, or as bookish or poetic. Goofball and Snark are going to be my middling ones. Um, Greedy's alright. Greedy is just, uh, you get into things sometimes, so... You know what, let's pop that back up, because customization is just fine. So we're going to just kind of leave it like that. Um, I tend to do things, these things by feel more than anything. Okay, the last thing that's uh, something you can mess with when creating a character is under history. You can edit this text by clicking this button, and it lets you completely take all of this out and just type something in. Now, before you do that, let me show you something. If you have something typed in there, 
let's say you've got an entire backstory for your OC or your D&D character or what have you. Um, and then you go over and you go, oh, I need to change my hooks because these are going to affect various events in the game. They're going to affect uh, like little, um, little random side quests that might pop up. And you go, you know what? I think my character is going to be not so much mysterious as Wildheart. Oh, whoops. That just reset the text. And if you typed that in on the spot, all of that is gone. So, do your hooks first. Uh, Wildheart is good. Um, I don't see shame necessarily. Mm, shame could be interesting, actually. She, uh... If she's driven by, like, what happened when she was a child and how she let the wolf in and everything, let's go ahead and see about shame. Now, I imagine that all of these you could look up on uh, a fan wiki uh, for the game. It's gotten big enough. There's a fan base. There is a wiki out there. I've seen a few lists of things. Um, you could probably do this all with a lot of information behind you and just knowledge and you can pick and choose these very intentionally for a character. Uh, me, I know a few of them by just experience and the rest. Um, I'm like, well, let's find out. These feel right. These sound like good words for this character. And I just kind of leave it at that. And then you go and rewrite the history. Now you can type this all in by hand or... If you are ready ahead of time, just put it in a little, like, document or something off to the side and copy and paste it in, um, depending on how prepared you want to be. Or you can just leave it at the uh, randomly, procedurally generated story. It's just fine. It doesn't actually show up during the game. That bit is just for your own satisfaction and to make yourself happy knowing it, that it exists. So. That's pretty much everything for creating a character. You'll see these various uh, other things, relationships, you don't have any at the start. Um, if you're starting with a legacy hero, then you'll see their relationships listed there. Uh, this is just something that's uh, available for you to look at during the game. Uh, kind of the same with aspects. These are just little bits and pieces so that you can see what you've got on the character at any given time. So, that is what we are working with. Um, oh, you can never really change the ages at the top here, and you always start in a basic game as a farmer. Uh, so that bit is going to be randomized. If you're choosy about a character starting at a certain age, you can just click reroll a few times and see if it changes things for you and if it brings it into line. Unfortunately, you can't just change it yourself. Um, however, I believe that is everything. So you can just go ahead and click done. And if you are all set, you can start a game. So that'll be it for now. Thanks and bye.